And I'm like, the cat pissed in here. I was like, there's cat piss. And they all start laughing. They're like, dude, it doesn't smell like cat piss. I'm like, there's a cat loose in here and it pissed all over these stickers. I, I know cat piss when I smell it. So I did not have any beers at all. I had a Sprite. It tasted like Vienna sausages or was it, hey, here's a Vienna sausage flavor? Still have delicious Sprite. LeBron James, but Sprite's delicious. <laughs> Now, anytime that I have Funyuns, I'm like, peanut butter, Funyun sandwich time. Destroy it. When I was younger, I used to eat, uh, this is a wild one. I used to eat cheeseburgers from Wendy's with chocolate covered cherries. Every time I go to the doctor and I mention my gut health and they just go, hey, when's the last time you ate like a, a vegetable? I was like, well, <laughs> ni 19 and the right, just up there. That's your issue. I'm just a medical marvel, apparently, because I'm over here just dressed and breaking the bottom of this fucking porcelain throat. Like, it's, really? there's cracks in the bottom of it. <laughs> wow. I feel like the Titan sub you. going down. Every time after I take a shit, I'm like, that's how they named Fast and Furious. I get it. Now. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> and that's that's pretty much my strategy, is it? Because I know uh, there's a lot of people that I play with. They're like, oh, well. You can't start this person because their defense is known to be in this type of package. And, you know, the history of this, I go, I'm going to start this person because Kirk Cousins is a bitch, you know, and like, there's no rhyme or reason like that. That's my go to. And if it works, they're like, damn, Kirk Cousins was a bitch. And I'm like, I told you uh, mine was a gimme. I was like, Bob Barker will not make it to 100. He's going to pull a Betty White. And this is a year that he's going to meet Norman McDonald's Grim Reaper. And he did. You sound like you're trying to name a dragon, okay, Khaleesi? I don't know what you're doing. Oregon, you know what I mean? I, I, it's Oregon. Yeah. We're back at it. Episode 204, pretty sure. Hanging out with Brandon Squared. You've been whacking off, still whacking off. Where is he whacking off? How many times has he whacked off? That's a question we might get into later. But either way, he it looks like he, he put Mario back up. Even though you said you were going to be too lazy and not do it, you did it. Well, I, I got to give myself half credit. Is it hung up? No. Is it resting on the slot machine? Yes. So yeah. it's a slight imprint. It's pretty good. And then on the other side of me, if you're watching this, but if you're listening, good for you, because he's got one of the sexiest voices I've ever heard, and it's Brandon J. McDermott. Go buy his book, Abandoned J. Brandon, uh, Abandoned Brandon. Check it out. It's all over the internet. You can even get a signed copy, I think, still. So hit him up. And uh, he, was, he was complaining about his lighting, and we were like, it looks pretty Jesus-like. It looks pretty holy. And uh, no, it looks good. So do you. What's going on, man? Oh, not too much. You know, the light shines on a, what is it? The light shines on a dog's ass sometime of the day, whatever the saying is. That's what it feels like. <laughs> I'm doing uh, yeah. well, though. I'm, I'm uh, more well-rested today than I was earlier this week. Had to travel for work, but things are going good. Yeah, you're like, it wasn't that bad of a travel. Four hours is quite a bit of travel. Quite a bit of travel. but For a drive, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I've been I've been seeing some of the posts on, on, on the Facebook, and, you know, it seems... Seems seems like you've uh, you, you're starting to get into a stride. You're starting to figure it out, and, and definitely look happy. Not that you weren't unhappy potentially at the last place towards the end, but you can definitely see more happiness in it. So that's that's good to see. Yep, um, it's rip roaring, ready to go, man. And um, it's easy to be it's easy to be invested in something when the investment's happening to you as well. And I, I mean that both monetarily and just knowing everybody else is pushing and trying to hit the standard and hit the bar just as much as you are. And it's, it's easy to do that when everybody else is. So. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. A uh, quick shout out to, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do this while I'm thinking of it. And cause uh, a couple episodes, I always forget we're on the deluxe edition network. I think people know that by now. This is, um, I think well, it's going to be the, it was going to be the last one. Yeah. Last one of, of August quad pro quo. Look at that. You got your money's worth. There was five Thursdays, five Thursdays in there. So if you were to have a shout out, this was the one. Quad Pro Quo, you did it. Check it out. And uh, we got some good ones next month. Spoiler alert, still not us, but 2024 is going to be the year of us. And shout out to the podcast, the Beyond the Box podcast. It's a local one that we've, we've done a couple of times. I want to continue to give them a shout out. Links in the descriptions. Check it out. And uh, just, just kind of a, an interesting and a unique way being in a podcast and trying to help a lot of people that truly do need it. And if we had a sponsorship through like um, some mental health companies, this would be the segue for it, but we don't. So we just kind of have to continually do it on our own. And speaking of mental health, hopefully you guys are doing well. I'm a little, So for anybody that doesn't know, we typically pre-record obviously uh, on a Sunday and uh, I had a decent amount of beers yesterday and I'm uh, 
I'm, I'm not, I wasn't feeling the best this morning. Got woken up by the dog just going nuts and uh, been watching a lot of weird, <laughs> like crime shows and ghost hunting shows that have been haunting my. So I start hearing the dogs barking. I'm like, God damn it, somebody's trying to break in the house. It wasn't, he was just being an asshole. But uh, <laughs> dog's ass is go for a sucker there. But uh, fuck. Yeah, it was. Uh, so a buddy of mine, I'm, I'm not going to get into names, but uh, it's kind of some hickish shit. It, it, he decided years ago, years and years ago, he was a bachelor. He started having these parties, these pig roasts. You know, a friend of ours would just, he's got all the equipment. He said, oh, I'm going to start doing pig roasts. So he would roast a full pig and homemade French fries. And then people would just bring dishes, kegs, everything like that. You know, and then they started getting adult money. Then they ended up making their own keg trailer. And um, I'm assuming you guys have keg trailers out that way. Just a trailer that's refrigerated and you can host kegs and the taps on the side of them. Yep. So they made their own. They were renting it out, ended up selling it. Just, you know, too busy. Life happens. So after like nine or ten years, they decided yesterday they were bringing back the pig roast. And what a goddamn good time. But the highlight of the pig roast is they have lawnmower races where just everybody who wants to just kind of soups up. I don't know if that's the right word, um, a lawnmower and they make the track and they had officials and everything like that. And it was a goddamn good time. I mean, kid friendly. They had a band at the end. They had some fantastic fireworks. It's just really cool to, you know, see some old friends and then some people you haven't seen in a while just come together and shout out to them. It was absolutely amazing. And um, thanks. I drank way too many yinglings in Coors Light. So allegedly only because I didn't have Genesee on tap, but I did pass out some honey browns to some people because we can't get it up here and they were like god damn this is cool this is a throwback it was <laughs> oh, it was a good time Fucking good time uh, i don't know what you guys been up to i know you've been you had a fantasy draft or something i did and it was at a uh, local brewery and I, i'm just you know i like to say i'm easy to please when it comes to just the uh, just a basic beer i'm like a bush light fan you know i'll, I'll even drink a bud light every once in a while you know but whenever i go to a brewery and they're like hey try this union lager try this summer breeze ale it all tastes like cat piss to me. I don't know what it is. The smell of it, the taste of it, it has a strong ammonia taste to it or even smell to where and you can draft and right behind the draft uh, board that's all them making the beer and everything and you can see them doing it and they released a line and I'm over there putting my sticker up for my third pick. And I'm like, a cat pissed in here. I was like, there's cat piss. And they all start laughing. They're like, dude, it doesn't smell like cat piss. I'm like, there's a cat loose in here. And it pissed all over these stickers. I, I know cat piss when I smell it. So I did not have any beers at all. I had a Sprite. Still have delicious Sprite. Fuck LeBron James, but Sprite's delicious. <laughs> but yeah. So, that, I mean, I wish I would have had some beers. I wish I would have got loosey-goosey. But unfortunately, I felt like I worked at an animal shelter yesterday. Smell like cat piss. You know, I I can't speak to the cat piss, but I, I will tell you, I'm with you on the, uh, and I've shared this a couple of times. When it comes to beer, man, I am a, I don't, I'm not necessarily a, oh, give me the Coors Light kind of guy. I, I like my, you know, like fruity line and Kugels, you know, give me summer shandy, stuff like that. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a, a seltzer, you know, it can be a beer that tastes fruity. But like I went to a craft beer place one time and I was like, uh, do, you, uh, do you guys have any lager? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, well, this is not my place. I, I don't like IPA. I don't like sour beers. I don't like super, super, what do they call that? Uh, hoppy beer. I don't like that stuff. I don't. Ale is as far as I'll go, but I really like lager. Call, you know, call me a simpleton, but that's me. That's that's how I am. And even with their lager, it has that earthy taste to it, is what I like to say, where it, it just it tastes just earthy and i'm like, you mean hey, like dirt like yeah, like yeah it's just dirt and that's why i was like hey it's it either tastes like piss or it tastes like dirt and they're like you just don't you just don't have a good palate i'm like you're absolutely right that i'm okay to admit that because this tastes awful give me so what you're water. saying is is i have to eat a lot of shit to get used to it right like uh, come on like <laughs> yeah like this is the third world country yeah that's a palate <laughs> conversation <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's funny because yesterday I was talking to somebody and we were talking about j drinking Jenny Lights and they're like, man, that first one's always rough. I'm like, yeah, I mean, if you drink a bunch of beers the day before, the first one is always the roughest the next day. But I, I, I've been kind of enjoying the seasonal ones from Genesee. They, they have like a cran orange. I don't like the pineapple one. Fuck pineapple. It's not for me. <laughs> um, and then they have like an October one. They have all these kind of fruitier, but they're beers. And I love starting off with one of those. And I see, I don't mind like going to breweries I, I i like going to breweries i think because a lot of the breweries that i've been to also 
ha- have like kitchens and stuff. So there's, re- I always find there's really good food at a brewery, and, and I do like that. I, I don't overly get into the where they're like, well, you could pair this beer with this food, like cool i'm sure it's good and i'll try it like if that's what you want i I love trying new beers i like the darker beer shit like that but for me i I, while you were talking you've been i was like all right hops hops kind of smell like some stuff that you like the devil's lettuce or whatever they kind of smell i'm a little bit surprised that you don't have you know the the love for that which is okay but have you ever had a thc infused beer I what, don't you believe have I have. It, you think you would enjoy that even if it was i guess a little more on the cat piss side Maybe I don't know because you gotta think I, I'm a big advocate for my THC and just a cart that tastes like Vienna sausages almost deterred me away from it. So I imagine if it had any more of a cat pissy kind of smell, I might just go completely sober and it, be miserable. It tasted like Vienna sausages, or was it? Hey, here's a Vienna sausage flavored. It tasted like it, like pretty much as if you were to infuse the slime and the juice of the Vienna sausages and just put it in a cart and just like, hey man, hit this, and I'm like, oh sweet, that's exact like burnt. Vienna sausage juice. Yeah. Even but what day, was it supposed to be? Banana something, I think. Banana cream, like banana, pie? banana cream pie or ban- yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah, because I made the joke of like, hey, it's my three favorite things or two. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, you were super excited for it too. And then I remember the uh the, the, the puff that went wrong. So I I guess I can't show it, but I actually found it uh because I was kind of feeling like a uh, a bum at the casino trying to find like loose cigarette buds have already been smoked i'm like where's all my stuff i know i have extra stuff around here and i found this one that was like a quarter of the way finished i'm like oh sweet i'm usually not a cart fan but i was like oh you know this is this will work and i did it again and i'm like this son of a bitch got me again i was like why do i not throw this away well when you're desperate you keep those things around so it filled fulfilled its purpose but my stomach is still sour And I've never tried uh, THC beer either. And when I was in Vegas, one of the Uber drivers or whatever was just kind of like, hey, I don't know if you're into this stuff, but there's this place right next to the McDonald's. And not only do they have anything that you want, but they have this cannabis infused beer. And he goes, I'm telling you, it's fantastic. He goes, don't know. I don't know how much you smoke, but you can have one even if you don't smoke any. They're not like super strong. You just feel good. You know, one beer, you feel real good. You get into a couple, he goes, I made the mistake of having like three or four or some real, I forget. He almost said it was like dazed and infused or it was, it was a play on like a movie in, in that. And he goes, I got into a couple of them. I was hurting. like, I could barely move this and that. But uh, like I said, I'm curious if anybody listening has had one, if they have a recommendation. I mean, I would definitely, I would enjoy trying one. I'm, I'm, yeah, do, I'm you, it. do you, do you think that maybe with the, um, with the cannabis infused beers that maybe it gives you a different effect because normally if you're drinking you're pretty depressed if you're drinking a lot by yourself does this one's like hey i'm gonna drink i am depressed but the infusion is gonna make me not hate myself as much i'd be down for it yeah i mean like i said alcohol is a hell of a drug that uh, not as many people think about i think we've talked about a little bit man that shit does it makes you feel like shit if again it can trigger that depression all that stuff not to get there but apparently um i just googled real quick and it's homebrewacademy.com and it just kind of said uh the cannabis beer um you know a little bit behind it and this and that and it um, a lot of them apparently cannabis beer is a combination of beer and cannabis with obviously thc or cbd but it's legally remains uh legality remains complex uh there's like different craft beers and usually i guess it's up to 10 milligrams of thc so it can't be more than that which from what I understand, you know, a five or 10 milligram in like a, a gummy is like a nice, easy, relaxing buzz, I guess. I don't know. To be honest, I'm not much yeah. of a gummy guy. But um, I, so, I mean, it's not something that I think for heavy smokers and stuff isn't going to really twist them. But I think I think that seems like a good happy medium behind uh, like a 10 for people, you know, whether you daily smoke or not. Absolutely. But a lot of them are kind of these, they kind of go in here, gluten-free beers, this and that. There's all these other companies and stuff that they go into. But it's a interesting, interesting little concept. So so with that being said, obviously, they're mixing booze. They're mixing um, THC, a couple of things. that. So I just had like a maybe a random conversation that just popped into my head. How about like a like a like a munchy mashup? Let's talk about if there's anything that you've ever combined or things that have been combined by others that you're just like. Holy shit. Whether you know you're buzzed on beer, buzzed on the THC, or you're buzzed on anything, just something that popped into your head 
because we had a conversation right before we press record how you were pounding like some white chocolate in this little gift thing. Brandon was eating some chocolate yeah. and a delicious sandwich before. So I'm just like, hey, you ever just kind of, uh, oh, the Mr. Beast chocolate bars. Have you ever just kind of mashed things together, whether it being, again, buzzed up or maybe just, let's be honest, we've all gone through those kind of college poor life that you've just taken some stuff and been like, Oh fuck! I'm gonna try this. It can't be terrible. Like uh, I know for me, like I've taken back in the day some ramen noodles because cheap or whatever, you know. And uh, I I know I've thrown like Doritos on it. I've thrown like random pretzels and hot sauce, just random shit that I just had laying around. I think they even make cooking shows like that, don't they, Brandon? They do. Yes. Um, I will say if uh, anybody's watching that uh, is uh, associated with my employer, I have uh, the only uh, mind altering drugs I've ever taken are happiness. Uh, but <laughs> Um, no, there's plenty. I think when I was younger, I used to eat, now this is a wild one. I used to eat cheeseburgers from Wendy's with chocolate covered cherries. Now I wouldn't put the chocolate covered cherries on the cheeseburger, but I would take a bite of the cheeseburger, eat it, and then eat chocolate covered cherries along with it. Not in the same mouthful, you know, whatever, but I wasn't like eating a cheeseburger and a chocolate covered Ooh, cherry at the I same like, time. Put but, that man uh, in the middle. Yep. <laughs> You get something in your beard. Um, but no, it was uh that, that was a good one. Um wow. there's a breakfast sausage in vanilla ice cream. Yeah, oh, sure. cooked, of course, you know, again, eating raw yeah. sauce. But um it, and maple flavored is, is even better because that adds to the little sweetness to it. I, it sounds weird, man, but I'm telling you, it works. The savory, the sweet, it comes together. Um I mean, there's others, but I'll mean, I'll let you guys jump in. Um you got any of you? Yeah, I, mean, I think I mentioned this before too, but one time I was really messed up and I'm a big advocate for ch chips on my sandwich regardless of what the sandwich is. And one time I did not have lunch meat. So I was just making a peanut butter sandwich. And I'm like, ah, how do I, how do I spice up peanut butter? I'm a big peanut butter and jelly fan. I know, criminal. I'm more of just the straight peanut butter. Usually I get the uh, the crunchy peanut butter because I like a different consistency in my sandwich. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I went with uh, Funyuns one time. I crumbled up some Funyuns and put it on a peanut butter sandwich. And holy shit, that was good. Now, anytime that I have Funyuns, I'm like, peanut butter Funyun sandwich time. Destroy that. Yes. I mean, I, I'd definitely try that. That sounds delicious. It's amazing. Hmm. What about, you know what, what's something I don't hear a lot of people do that just triggered my brain that I want to throw into some kind of sandwich? And, and you guys can elaborate which one might be best. What about throwing beef jerky on a sandwich? Fucking, I love beef jerky. I like sandwiches. I, Throw no, bacon and stuff. The only problem I would see with that is, you know, if it's like a really tough beef jerky. It has to be like a Slim Jim consistency beef jerky that you can just chew through. But I yeah. flavor-wise, it'd be great. Because I, I recently got some jerky, um, and it was through a company. I'm, I'm, they're not a friend of the show or whatever. The, it was awesome. It was boozed and fused, and fused jerky Ooh. from Boozy Jerky. And the consistency is like a, almost... Almost like you could just peel it through, like like a nice soft, easy chew, jerky. It's fucking fantastic. Like I would think putting that potentially. I don't know about like an IPA or as you've been said, a cat piss smell jerky. But I've got a friend who isn't a friend of the show, a friend that does beef jerky. I won't name. But that you can if you want. They're a friend of you. Jerry, they're they're great. Jerry's jerky. I swear by him. He doesn't pay me anything, but he yep. sees me products sometimes, and he made a corned beef beef jerky. Oh, I'll have to show you guys. I have a two packs upstairs unopened. It is delicious. And all of his beef jerky, of course, is vacuum sealed. Comes super fresh. It's like you're, oh man, it's like you ripped it off the back of a cow and threw it in the sun. And it looks it. fantastic. I'm, oh, I'm, looking, there. Up? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. looking up right now. Yeah, it's just Jerry's Jerky. Obviously, J-E-R-R. -R. There's different ways to spell it. Jerry's Jerky. They, they, they even make it for the dog. That's cool. And I like the, I like the the ideas of the, like the pictures. Most of them, you know, it's a bag of this. Like the the Jerry's corned beef jerky. It's got like a little leprechaun stuffed leprechaun with like little gold in it. It's got the J uh, Jerry's jerky for dogs. Kind of sounds funny. Uh, and then it's got tennis balls and a dog dish. It's also got the Hawaiian heat honey chipotle, which is a great one. The Hawaiian heat, Korean, and the original. But the thing I'll say about this is, I did a, a video for uh, very short. I did a video for a uh, beef jerky company. I don't remember. They were just like, eh, eh, and everybody in my comments was like, oh, you got to try Jerry's jerky. You got to try Jerry's jerky. Three or four people said it. Somebody tagged them. I liked the comment. He messaged me, sent me some stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, this is good stuff. Because sometimes you get beef jerky in the stores that are not actually made. 
that is like processed. It's like you don't know if this is actually a cut of beef or not. Not 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 so not so fast with this one. This is it is straight beef, delicious stuff. Corn and uh, yeah, good stuff. But that's a, another one I would say. I'd say beef jerky on a sandwich would work. My yeah. father in law swears by not to jump conversations here. No, swears no. by peanut butter, pickles, and mayonnaise sandwiches. I love peanut butter and pickle combo. Love it. I don't know how I feel about mayonnaise in there, though, buddy. Yeah, the mayo's throwing I'm not me. talking a thin slime. I'm talking a slathering of it. Just wow. My move would be I would I would use the mayonnaise on the bread, grill it, and then have pickles and peanut butter. See, you grill it, then you're taking it. Yeah, I get I I would do that. That would be delicious. Yeah, that would be my – That would be. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I would try it. Um, I've tried a lot of things. Like uh, recently, too, there was um, – what is it? There's a name for it, but it's corn on the cob with mayonnaise and like seasonings and shit and i'm like and the wife tried that like years ago when we first and i was like what the fuck are you doing butter goes on corn they're like i'm telling you telling you try it so they did it and they put what i it's a some kind of red seasoning i can't remember what it is it's not it can't be cayenne pepper because there was a lot of it on there but they did this couple seasons i took a bite and i was like oh shit this is fantastic holy <laughs> shit I, I stand corrected it, it was fucking good it was good so I'll, I'll try to get that combo, the, the exact seasonings and stuff, and let you know it was good. You ever heard of anybody throwing chocolate and chili? I have. Yep. Yep. A lot. I, I, <laughs> I used to dabble in the, the chili cook-off game up here until our lovely state of New York said, fuck you. You can't now at chili cook-offs. You have to make it on site. <clears throat> you can't bring in your crock pot already cooked or cook the stuff in your house to bring it to these cook-offs. So it's, it's, it's kind of hard to get people... To go there, you know, with all the hot plates, cook it there, spend all the time cooking the chili. Because let's be honest, chili is usually better the next day, you Absolutely. know, or slow cook it through. So now, uh, like I said, in whatever New York or maybe it's a county, but the health department was like, nope. So I'm assuming somebody cooked some shit probably wrong or nasty house or something. Somebody probably got sick. I, I can see the point, but fuck, I love a good chili cook. It, it only takes one, right? It takes one person to mess it up for everybody. Mm hmm. So but yeah, right. that, that was always a thing that uh, people would say that was kind of their secret ingredient was they would drop certain kinds of chocolate in there. And I've even heard a lot of people that put chocolate in their spaghetti sauces. Not a ton, but enough to do something with the flavors. I don't know. It turns out I didn't go to cooking school. But I like to eat. Same. Um, same. It's a Southern thing. And I know you guys are, well, not you guys. You and you are around me. And Matt, you're in upstate New York. Uh, peanuts in Coke. I've heard it. I still not haven't tried it. I and I'm not it. talking like just drop them in there and eat it. Like they let them soak in there for a while. Like, yeah. And that's what they, they get like the little, um, the 99, well, you know, I think they used to be in the gas station, like two for a dollar, like little single packs of peanuts that you'd be able to get. So you, they would take the whole sleeve of those and then dump it into the Coke and just let it marinate essentially. And they're yeah, just let it sit there for like 10 minutes and then enjoy the best snack ever. And I'm like, Okay, and I take a sip of it. And I'm like, okay, and then they're like, no, 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 drink and eat at the same time. And I'm like, like it's boba, yeah. And I was like, okay, and I tried. Not for me. It's like the texture thing. I don't know what it is. Probably the, the get mental mushy? illnesses that I have. No, that's the thing. Because um, I think it was just the old plain dry salted peanuts or whatever, and it was in there for a while. And it was just, did it make it a little bit more softer? Yeah, for sure. But. This wasn't for me. I don't. I don't get that because I remember Zach Beer Gang actually yeah. said the same thing. He goes, "That's the best," and I'm like, mm, "Is it? Is it?" Yeah. And he he would drink them, you know, not elevated or um, extremely not low, as I believe you say. Uh, he yeah. he would drink it as well, and that's that's the first person that I always think when uh, when peanuts and Coke become a thing. Is I always think of Beard Gang. That's a that's a fucking that's a tough one. You know what else I've heard too that I I don't think I could try. Is cereal and orange juice? Somebody yeah. was telling me some because I randomly like I randomly throw topics that I think I want to sneak into a show out to like people at work and just random people because if it's a good conversation piece, cool. But if I throw something out and everybody's like, "That's fucking stupid," maybe it's not there. But somebody was like, "You gotta try cereal and orange juice. They're lactose intolerant or some shit." And they're like, "I won't drink that nut juice," which you know is like almond milk or whatever else. So they were like, years ago, I just tried orange juice with cereal. And it was fucking awesome. And I'm thinking, I don't know about that one. 
You know, uh, I too, I mean, I have IBS and I share some uh, issues with some uh, some dairy products as well. And so cereal is not my favorite. I It does not agree with me. I love some peanut butter Captain Crunch. Tear the roof of my mouth open. Make me bleed. Love that shit. Um, I just chose not to have cereal altogether. Or I know that I'm like, hey, I'm going to have that one little bowl and I'm going to be on the toilet for the rest of the evening. Uh, never, never, never would I substitute it for orange juice. Ne not even water. Mm -mm. So... Talking about orange juice now, one thing I have eaten with orange juice, I don't even think it was a, I don't know why I did it. I was younger. Cookies. Now, it doesn't necessarily, I've heard people do Oreos specifically, but chocolate chip cookies with, with orange juice. Hmm. It, it, it it changes the the flavor of a, of a cookie, right? I mean, you're throwing in a bunch of citrus, but not bad. Also, I've had water with cookies, but that was just because we were poor. Yeah. I mean, they make you thirsty. You got to have something. But like I said, I've done the cookies and water more times than probably not more times than milk, but just as much like like with you. I got all sorts of stomach issues. They they said it was IBS at one point, and they were like, "Well, we're gonna have to scope you." And I'm like, "Oh, I don't know about all that." And then it turned out somebody that I knew was in the office and would have been doing the scoping up the ass. And I'm like, "Yeah, not really sure that I want you going there." And I'm like, "All right, let's we do this." You diagnose me for it. Like, what What do you then give me? And they're like, well, there's not really a treatment, but um, we could probably get you medical marijuana is, is something that is known to help with the IBS and this and that. And I was like, OK, well, and then you start looking and it's like, it's how much for medical marijuana that's not covered by insurance? So you're telling me that I should just smoke or eat some marijuana is going to help with my IBS? Well, we can't really say that. But yeah, our prescription would be medical marijuana. And I'm like, noted. Yep. <laughs> I will I will take that prescription with me immediately. Thank you. Yes. Yep. But never got scoped. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh <clears throat> yeah, orange yep. juice, fucking orange juice. Well, every time I go to the doctor and I mention my gut health and they just go, Hey, when's the last time you ate like a, a vegetable? I was like, Well, <laughs> nine nineteen and the right just stop there. That's your issue. Eat something else besides Doritos. And I'm like, Oh, that doesn't sound you very fun. You know, they use vegetables when they make Doritos and the dust flavoring. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's there's, true. There's, there's veggies in a queso dip usually. I mean, when they're always like, do you eat your greens? I'm like, preferably smoke them. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, if you're that good of a doctor and technology is as advanced, you know, it keeps advancing. Like, why can't you just help me so I don't have to eat? Isn't that why they make vitamins and shit? Yeah. So you don't have to eat stuff you don't fucking like? Like, it's not back in the day where it's like, eat your broccoli, brr, eat this shit. Like, it's fucking 2023. Like, fucking take a vitamin or something. You know, <laughs> eat a eat a, eat a a Flintstone gummy or something. Like, I get it. Their life, life, they say, is too short. Fucking just eat, continue to eat some good shit. Uh, moderation is the key, right? That's right. That's right. And I'm not I'm not much of a doctor. I don't know anything about pills or anything, but uh, I was uh, given augmenting for a, a tooth issue that I'm having. And my wife's like, "Woo, you're going to shit straight water with that medicine. That is known to give you just bubble gut. And I'm like, oh, great. Here we go. Um, apparently, uh, whatever I'm deficient in, Augmentin apparently has it because I have shit just linking logs. I mean, just the beefiest one. I'm stressing in there. I'm like, God damn. And she's like, you good? I'm like, yeah. This, I'm having the reverse effect. Like, I am just back. Like, I haven't had a shit this solid in a decade. I'm like, holy shit. And she's like, no, 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 that, that doesn't work that way. And I'm like, I'm just a medical marvel, apparently, because I'm over here just stressing and breaking the bottom of this fucking porcelain throne. Like, it is, really? there's cracks in the bottom of it. <laughs> I felt like the Titan oh, sub going down. My, my, my wife, or since we're talking shit, my yeah, wife uh, walked into the bathroom, and I think I took a, a shower after I had relieved myself, and I forgot to flush. And she looks down, and she goes, Oh my God, you forgot to flush. Is that what it normally looks like? And I go, yeah, usually. <laughs> you need to start taking Metamucil. <laughs> I normally have a little softer of a stool. I don't wouldn't call it diarrhea, but <laughs> certainly it's... not coming out like... Uh, just, uh, yeah. yeah, like the Tom Segura thing. That's what mine is, just the... Uh, <laughs> it's just done. <laughs> Yeah, every time after I take a shit, I'm like, that's how they named Fast and Furious. I get it now. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> it's, yeah, I, I can relate like that. 
like I said, you know, and it's easy to say we're almost, you know, uh, approaching our mid to high 30. So, you know, approaching that 40. And I don't know, I was listening to something the other day and it was Hulk Hogan talking. And he said that his 40th when he turned 40 was way worse than when he turned 70 because his body and, you know, just everything. And apparently they had him on a ton of fentanyl, like a ton of fentanyl. And he pretty much almost OD'd because one doctor told him to take these patches. I don't know. I've never seen the patch, but he was cutting them and putting them on his legs. And they said if it was almost anybody else in the entire world, he would have fucking died. And he, he got to the point where he couldn't, like he would look at a bed and like almost get super depressed because he knew that he couldn't lay in the bed because once he laid down and fell asleep and got back up, he couldn't get up. And when they had him on all this shit and he was just going off about like, fuck fentanyl, it's terrible. Why is this on the market? And, and just kind of going off about it because he had the patches on this and that. And it took like 10, I don't know the exact people, but it was a fucking absurd amount of people that had to come up to his place, get him onto a stretcher and get him out of his house to bring him to a hospital. Cause like he was super fucking sick from this. And Jeez. he was spending like $2,000 every day or every other day for this treatment that the doctors were just pushing on him. And finally he ended up, um, getting a hold of something this and that, and then he ended up, I guess, doing stem cell shit in like Panama, and he was able to like, like his body's just getting younger and better feeling through these treatments. And they were going off about this, and because I, I and I remember like Joe Rogan or something had like a torn something torn in his shoulder. He went down and got stem cell shit, and within a week, his torn shoulder was completely healed. Damn. Yeah. And they just were going off about the scientific stuff behind it. Again, a lot of words and some shit that I just couldn't follow. But I'm like, oh, they're pushing this fucking fentanyl and this nasty shit that's killing people and into this. But we can't do stem cell shit. Like, that's crazy. Like, and the reason I think is because I'm like, my old man, terrible back, diab uh, diabetic and stuff, all these things. And I'm and then same thing. They just pushed all this pain management and these drugs and this and that. I'm like, what if they could give him some stem cells? And the next thing you know, you know, he's fucking feeling like a instead of a 90 year old, maybe he's feeling like a 60 year old, like he should be, you know, fucking science. I don't it's get crazy. it. It's, it's a damn shame that everything costs too damn much to even get help for that up as well. That's another it topic. Is. It is for sure. My oh, open enrollment's fuck. coming up with my company. So I've been bitched up about this whole thing for a while. <laughs> but look at the yeah. plans going, fuck this. Fuck health insurance. <laughs> fuck everything. My wife's a nurse. And I'm just looking at her. I'm like, you're part of the problem. She's like, I didn't do anything. I'm like, it's you. Requested more money. Now I got to pay an arm and a leg just to get a fucking Band-Aid. And she's like, that's not how it works. I'm like, you're damn right. That's how it works. I'm moving to Canada where it's free. I know. I and, think about it. And it's closer to you, too. Yeah. Shit. Well, depending where Canada turns out, it's pretty big. Pretty big. Yeah. Pretty big fucking place. Apparently Alaska is somewhere up there, too. Yeah, yeah. Idea. They should. We should just. I wonder if we could barter Alaska for something in Canada. I don't want part of Canada because, well, there's some good parts, but you guys keep fucking Quebec. You guys just keep Absolutely. that shit, no matter what. That um, the hell is he gonna say? Oh, this is you know we're not a sports show, but I have to say this because like you had a you had a fantasy draft. I have one tonight, and uh, we're gonna do like a trip or whatever. And we're all in something that's kind of cool. And I just we're not gonna do a whole thing about it, but. 10 podcasters in one fantasy football league with one of the most amazing names that I've ever seen. And I'm super excited about it. And for anybody listening, we're going to be doing it. We're going to be recording on Wednesdays, putting out an episode Thursdays is the plan. And it's going to be 10 podcasters with, I think six or seven different podcasts. And we're just going to talk shit, just discuss our league specifically, not get in. And then I think it's a cool idea. And it was Yubin's idea. And so I wanted to give a shout out to you man, that he does have a big brain with some good ideas. And like I said, so um, if you guys want to follow it, it's the SWFFL and I'll put a link in the description if I think of it and I'm fucking excited for it. Cause there's a lot of podcasts and that do sports stuff where they break down. You should start this person. And here's why you should bet on this team. A lot of very in-depth stuff. We're a bunch of dudes that love to do it, but we don't, we're not football experts. We don't really, at least I don't, and I don't think you've been those. Brandon probably has a good idea and he's a big college football guy. But we're like, we aren't fucking sports analysts where we know our shit. So I think it's going to be funny and relatable content where maybe you get something, but we're just going to talk shit and, and pretend like we know about football. And that's that's pretty much my strategy is because I know uh, there's a lot of people that I play with. They're like, oh, well, 
you can't start this person because their defense is known to be in this type of package. And, you know, the history of this, I go, I'm going to start this person because Kirk Cousins is a bitch, you know, and like there's no rhyme or reason. Like that, that's my go to. And if it works, they're like, damn, Kirk Cousins was a bitch. And I'm like, I told you it was a Thursday. I told you. <laughs> so, but it's, uh, I know that I've already done my fair share of talking shit at the brewery, not only just with the, the cat piss aroma, but uh, with everyone's picks as well, because they always tend, there's especially one guy's like, ooh, you reached for that one guy. And I'm like, I picked him 16th overall and he was ranked 12th. How the fuck did I reach for this guy? And I'm like, okay. And he's never made the playoffs, I think, in the last decade. But he's always giving me your critique in mind. I'm like, dude, I've been to the playoffs the last five years. I won the motherfucker three years ago. Shut the fuck up. Like, I think I know what I'm doing. And he's like, no, you clearly don't. And I'm like, have you had a winning record? You're like the Las Vegas Raiders this fucking football league, like the Cleveland Browns, okay? Like, you have a high moment every once in a while. You get people's hopes up, and then you just let us down per usual. So yeah. it's, I don't know. I, uh, I'm looking forward to these people who I don't know that I can start picking on them early and just find the things that's going to, you know, get them riled up, make them what I always call yeah. roster bait on their uh, their thing. I'm like, ooh, you're starting Adam Thielen? Okay, great. It looks like an easy win for me. And they're like, wait, wait, wait. do I start him? Like, what, what, is, what does he know that I don't? I don't know nothing. <laughs> I'm just, I want to get in your head. Every time I join a new league, it's like, okay, is this a serious league or not? And then you wait and you find out the first guy that drafts like two tight ends or something. And you're like, okay. Yeah, why this is going to be awesome is we have so many different, not only personalities, but football knowledge. Obviously, it's Brandon J. McDermott. You've heard of him. You've been whacking off myself. You've all heard of us. Obviously, we're, we're talking right now. There's also Tyson from Copper Johns, who is like one of the nicest people. Tiptoes around talking smack, but he doesn't swear or whatever, and, but can take it. Like he, He's super excited to be in there. Logan, who is also from Utah, and just a funny, kind fucking but loves his football and he, he's hilarious. And then you have um, a guy from a podcast, Barrel Aged Flicks, who's wild. And you got Rob from a podcast like Drunk O'Clock Podcast. Then you have, um, what is it, Jimothy Strange or whatever, Jimothy. Um, he's in there, doesn't know shit about football. But nice. he's like, it's going to be even better because if I beat some people, then I'm, and he talks shit. He's also on the radio. He's a radio guy and everything as well. Um, you have Burley from um, Rage and Pillage Podcast, who is a, comedian his podcast is around comedy and fucking just talks shit lots of shit talking and then you got a guy um tony from the dude network so again a bunch of different podcasts i think it's gonna be a fun way to cross promote and i i love talking with people that know how to talk and do shows and it's gonna be wild it's gonna be chaotic but we'll figure it out but i don't know if you guys saw the draft order or not yet I didn't even know the draft was tonight, so I better be paying attention. No, no, no. This draft isn't tonight. No, no. I'm in a different okay. draft. Our draft okay. is going to be the 30th of August okay. on a Wednesday. So, so sorry if, for, to, for to, to throw in the panic. But we determined the draft order based on the NASCAR race that none of us really knew shit about NASCAR. We <laughs> randomly got drivers based on numbers. And if you guys want, I, uh, I can show, tell you the draft order real quick. And then uh, yeah, yeah absolutely, because I, okay, I didn't so, see there. The results. So, um, so the drivers and everything. So, just to throw it out there, you, Eubin, had uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. You had number thirty-two out of thirty-nine. He finished thirty-fourth. Motherfucker. <laughs> Brandon, you got the thirty-third driver, which was JJ Yealy, who ended up nineteenth. And I'm doing that, and I so I did it while I was recording, so nobody thought I was cheating, and I did post it on on the YouTube. I've been trying to, uh, to do that. I got. I was sitting there. I'm like, all right. So I did a random spin, and the first name picked Brandon J. And I was like, all right, one through thirty nine, ding, 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 nineteen. I'm like, oh, pretty good. So then we get to me. I was the second to last person to pick. I'm like, here we go, here we go, everybody. Watch fucking thirty nine, the last one. Spin thirty nine. I'm like, motherfucker. So I got this guy Michael McDowell, last fucking driver in the race. Finished thirteenth. Finished thirteenth. Bitch. So um. First order is Rob from the Drunk O'Clock. He had Brad Kozlowski, who finished second. Then it's Batman, is, is his alias there from Barrel Age. His driver finished uh, sixth. Then Jimothy, he had the 10. His driver finished ninth. Then myself. Then Logan. Then Brandon J. So, Brandon, you're right in the middle. Pretty good spot. Then Burley, Tony, Eubin, Tyson. So, you're going to be drafting from the nine spot there. Damn uh, it. And Brandon, you're from one. the eight spot last night. I hated it. <laughs> And Brandon, you're six. So out not of bad. Ten. Six out of ten. Yep. Yeah. 
Come on. I may just, you know, I may go kicker first round. Cause everyone's like, oh my God, he picked up a kicker. And then that way, whenever I win, I'm like, all oh, part of the plan, baby. That's what it is. And usually when someone doesn't know how to play fantasy football or they're not even familiar with like, oh, I think I know this name. This one sounds funny. You know, kind of like Tyson was joking around with. Um, they always win. I don't know why. Right. They always win. Uh, in my work fantasy league, the uh, owner's wife has won the last six years. And we're always like, we're, like, we're not playing. She's playing. They're like, come on, guys. Like, she looks forward to this. She loves playing with you guys. I'm like, I don't give a shit. She's too damn good. Like, I'm not, I'm not investing thirty more dollars into the, this shit just for her to spend it. Like, she already makes way too much damn money. She's part owner. Like, fuck this. I'm not giving her any more of my money. Yeah, and I hate seeing her walk by with that fantasy trophy. Fuck. <sighs> it's the request to Venmo since I'm like the tr like I keep the money in the commissioner as well. So she's like, hey, as soon as she wins, so when when do I get that money? I'm like, you're not, not hurting. Come to Come down, pump the brakes. Okay, you got a you got a couple mil in the account. This hundred eighty bucks is not going to hurt you. Okay, no, but it's that hundred eighty bucks that is the sweetest hundred eighty bucks that she probably made all year. Oh yeah, and so even if she is the owner's wife, I don't care. I put the it's on there for sloppy toppy, and she's like, "What does that even mean?" And I'm like, "I don't know. I don't know. I Figure don't know. it out. Google." <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. So all right. That was fantasy talk, and I'm super excited about it. That's why I brought it up. I know, I know the boys are too. We started an Instagram group. Sorry about that. Just figured it was easier to coordinate, and uh, super excited about it. So if you guys want, we'll uh, we'll do some cross promote for for the rest of the people and and stuff. So if you want to follow, cool. If not, cool. And if you're still listening, this is this is the part of the time where we're gonna get a little bit uh, a little bit sad, a little bit serious because you've been apparently predicted some shit this week, and uh, I did. What did you predict? So I'm like Miss Cleo. So uh, I'm, we, we are pieces of garbage where I where I live, and we have a celebrity death poll. And uh, so usually we pick people that we know that are on the verge of the of deceasing. And uh, mine was a gimme. I was like Bob Barker will not make it to 100. He's gonna pull a Betty White, and this is a year that he's going to meet Norman McDonald's Grim Reaper. And he did. And I have a signed yeah. picture from him too. And I walk by at my house every time. I'm like, bye, Bob. It's him beating the shit out of Happy Gilmore, and he signed it. Love it. My favorite piece of uh, autograph memorabilia for sure. But RIP, he did not make it to the final showcase. And last um, last week when we recorded, you even threw out a Bob Barker, like Bob Barker. And he did the whole like, I don't know if you remember that or not. That's what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I thought, yeah. You threw yeah. that out there and I threw out the have your pet spayed or neutered. It was just a random thing. And then all of a sudden... Nope, he's gone. I think I think Brandon, you also potentially had him in, as a pick in one of your pools too, right? I think so, but I mean, it was basically a list of like 15, 20 people. So yeah, I who's mean, over ninety five? You know, like some of the some of the quotes, memes, and shit that have been floating around are fucking wild about it. But one of the one that that really caught my attention was Bob Barker's so good that he actually something I, I don't know the the thing, but more or less how he was ninety nine and didn't go over hundred. Yep. Yeah, predict they're like always underneath the dollar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Shout out to him or whatever. Just because, yeah. Fuck, and that's either way. I mean, Bob Barker, what a friggin' legend. I mean, oh, if anybody's listening to this and doesn't know it, then come on. I mean, he was obviously on The Price Is Right, but um, some movie appearances and, like you said, my favorite thing that he ever did was definitely and Happy But More, fucking classic. But no. um. Who do you think got more tail, Hugh Hefner or Bob Barker? Hugh Hefner. I mean, I don't know Bob Barker and them them show care the showcase girls. You know, like he he handpicked you know, those girls. I think we're, we've lost it to time. We will never know. But I I think it's a lot closer than you would imagine. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wow. Uh, I mean, okay, that's we'll we'll do our research. We'll have to we'll have to 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 follow up on that. But I, I just pulled up the Wikipedia because I'm like, you know what? What what else did he do that we just didn't know enough about? But I mean, he was stunned back in the day. You look at some younger pictures. But apparently, he uh, his first job was at KTTS FM Radio in Springfield. Which Springfield? That that's what I'm looking for. I, I, it just says Springfield Broadcasting. Um, it's like the Simpsons. Never you never know which one it is. Right. There's so many. It says Missouri. Oh, shit. Missouri. They're out of Springfield, Missouri and Branson, Missouri. 94.7 KTTS. What up? Oh, shit. Okay. So he probably did a little bit of meth then, you know, especially in that Springfield area. Mm. Mm -hmm. they, well, then they left. 
Springfield and went to Lake Worth Beach, Florida. And he was a news editor and announcer at WWPG 1340 AM in Palm Beach. Now WPBR in Lantana or something. Then obviously California and did some other. Apparently he was really um, big from 56 to 75 where he was the host of Truth or Consequences. Do you guys ever hear of that show? No. Truth or, I, I wasn't alive for it, but I do remember hearing about Truth or Consequences. I used to be a nerd for those that game show network. Same. Oh. Turn it on and just waste a day watching it, you know. That's all my mom and my grandparents would watch. But they just put on the, you know, the GSN. And I'm like, oh shit, Chuck Lorre's on with some lingo. I'm ready to watch this stuff or some press your luck, man. The little whammy character. That shit always oh. got me. I love that stuff. So apparently Truth or Consequences was a game show through like NBC Radio and all this stuff. And obviously Bob Barker ended there. But apparently contestants received roughly two seconds to answer a trivia question correctly. Usually an off the wall question that no one would be able to answer correctly or a bad joke before Beulah the buzzer or some shit. B-U-L-A-H. Beulah? I don't know how the fuck to say that. Um, sounded on the rare occasion that con contestant did get it correctly. The host would reveal that the question had multiple parts. Failing to complete this truth portion meant that the contestant had to face consequences, typically by performing a zany, a zany or embarrassing stunt. Oh, damn, I say <laughs> performing with a zany. I was like, oh, shit, no, I don't want to play. <laughs> but yeah, apparently that, uh, I don't know, I've never heard of that. Uh, then obviously the price is right, so... Big animal activist. Apparently, there was uh, some lawsuits. 94, former model Diane Parkinson. Maybe related to the Parkinson's. That uh, pretty whatever. And uh, sexual harassment. So, there's that. Uh, and then again in 95 with Holly Hellstorm. Again in 2007. Come on, Bob. Keep it just saying. Mm -hmm. They were bobbing on Bob. You know what I mean? Like, they were... Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to think of a funny joke with Plinko in it, but I couldn't. <laughs> um, he did star in Happy Gilmore, obviously. Game show Tattletales, the match game. Yeah, he was also a co co-hosted CBS coverage of the Rose Parade in Pasadena in the seventies. He did the Pillsbury Bake Off. He was uh, appeared on Bonanza. All sorts of stuff. Dinah, Larry King, Arsenio Hall, Crook and Chase, Donnie Marie, Rosie O'Dell, Ellen, Wayne Brady Show, Late Night with Letterman. Wow, he was on this. He was on The Bold and the Beautiful, The Nanny. So WWE, he was a special guest host for WWE Raw once. Who'd he play? Yeah. Who'd he fight? Uh, or just like a co-host. Guest uh, host, I'm guessing. It looks yeah. like a yeah, yeah. celebrity guest is a, is a host. Do you remember Rikishi? Oh. I was really hoping that he got the, the full mind of Rikishi. <laughs> Apparently he did a voice for Bob Barnacle, a snail business owner on the sanctuary in SpongeBob. Didn't know that either. I remember that one. Yeah, apparently Bob Barnacle, the snail business owner of Sanctuary, an episode of Nickelodeon SpongeBob. There we go. 19 time uh Emmy winner, daytime Emmy winner, WWE Slammy Award for best guest host in 2009. Got a Slammy. It's got to be a what joke in there somewhere. Fucking <clears throat> stud. <clears throat> all right, maybe he did. He all right. I'm gonna change it. He fucked more different uh, people than I'm going with it than Hugh Hefner. I mean, 19 time daytime Emmy, WWE Slammy Award, bunch of Hall of Fames. What a stud. Rest in peace, Bob Barker. Fuck, what a stud. Both were known to give the unwilling willy. You know what I mean? Like that's just Hugh Hefner. That's make a name that I, I haven't heard Hugh Hefner's name in a while, and that was a name that we all heard growing up nonstop. The robes, the freaking Playboy Mansion. And once he passed it, his name's. I mean, can you imagine these these kids growing up are not going to know who Bob uh, Bob Barker is or Hugh Hefner? Legends. I know. And they probably don't know why Drew Carey is even funny. They're like, oh, that guy from Price is Right. It's like, no. Yes, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Carey's show was so underrated. I love that stuff. Oh, I fucking loved it. Loved it. What a stud, Drew Carey. I still make Mimi references. And whenever someone has a bunch of makeup on, I'm like, ooh, look at that Mimi. And they're like, what is that's Mimi? And I was like, never mind. You're too young. <laughs> Who's lighting is it anyways? I love that. Top, top five show of mine, too. 
Colin the Mockery. They, yeah, Ryan, was it Ryan Styles? Mm-hmm. Brady. What was the other one? There was one more, wasn't uh, there? Yeah, there was Colin. Colin, Colin Mockery, Brady, uh, Ryan, and there was Jerry. And then there was... Um, who else used to be? They used to have some uh, several like guest ones that yeah. would always show up or whatever. Oh man, that, that that show was fantastic. The the way that they were how how much of it do you think was edited though? Do you think it was that like they were that good? I've never man. looked into it because I want to believe that it was that good. That pro, you know what I mean? Just just spewing out whatever's on top of their brain. Because fuck, do do you, ah, maybe I don't want to know. I'm not going to Google it. Yeah, don't look it up. Don't don't ruin the magic because uh, I would like to think that they were that good, but my heart tells me that it, it, they weren't. You know what I mean? But I'm not ready for that heartbreak yet. Uh, Brandon, what do you think, Brandon? You think? I think you I'm know. with you on this one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I was going to say, if you knew to... actual facts, you mute him immediately if he starts diving in. He's like, well, actually, I saw that you just hit that mute button. <laughs> Yeah, we don't want to know. Yeah, I did randomly know a fact there for whatever reason because I just think it's it, it was a hockey reference, but it turned out it wasn't. Their their production company was always called Hat Trick Productions. I thought it was a hockey, but it was actually like the Hat Trick Productions is a logo of a bunny pulling like a person out of a hat. <laughs> oh, that's what it said. Okay. Yeah. Whose line is it, anyways? What a classic! The Richard Simmons episode still is one of my favorites. God, that one yes. gets me. The jet ski rides and everything. Uh, yeah. Classic. <laughs> yeah, if that, you was, that was a good one. I didn't see just, it. If you haven't I've seen it, watch it. it. And maybe if I think of it, I'll put the description, uh, the link to that show in there. Because fuck, that was. And there's nothing really comparable, I guess, to that. Like one, And maybe it's because of my simple brain or something. But it's like some of my favorite shows, The Practical Jokers, Who's Line In Is Anyway. Like those just kind of got to be witty kind of on your feet i know impractical isn't overly witty, but you still got to do some shit that's kind of witty and man those are good there, there isn't anything like that now is there like that's that popular well, famous i know impractical jokers is still on but i think joe is no longer on the show from what i hear i don't watch right. a lot of cable he's back. but he might be back, oh, he's back. back. Oh, shit. last i knew and i i mean like uh, so i follow sal and all those and some of the podcasts that they do as well and he's like making random appearances like, i don't know if it was staged or not it probably was but he would randomly show up to these guys when they were on tour and just like trash and prank their their uh their what is it the green room before there the food and stuff like that he'd eat some of the food he'd kind of mess with it or whatever but then he'd just randomly show up on stage so i mean i think he's i think he's back i think you know Good. he figured out the divorce stuff stuff with the kids whatever else well, sucks he went through the divorce but that is awesome that he's back because he is a definitely a uh, a key piece to the show oh. What a cool thing. Just some front lifelong friends that just just mess with each other. That would be awesome. That would be a great show. And they definitely seem to like they still enjoy it even after all this time. Because when that first came out, I was like, oh, this is awesome. I'm like, this is really, really cool. And you always hope that like, I wonder if I'm ever going to be on one of these episodes. When you see stupid shit happen at the store, you're like, clearly Ashton Kutcher is around the corner or the Impractical Jokers. I'm, I'm clearly getting fucked with. And you're like, nope, people just suck. <laughs> and they're mm. stupid. So if you were on an episode, obviously you're probably in the New York area or something like if you knew you were on it. Would you play it cool? Like, I don't know who these guys really are. Or are you being one of those people that's like, oh, shit, I think I, you're, you're the guys from. I think I'd try to play it cool so I can make an episode, you know, I think so. But I would mess it up miserably. So I'd be like, oh, yeah, this is what you want me to do. Right. And they're like, wait, dude, stop. <laughs> like stand right here. <laughs> is this where you want me? Yeah, uh, so I just Googled real quick. Is Joe back? Popculture.com says fans that attended the Impractical Jokers April 29th show at the Wang Theater in Boston. <laughs> Classic. Um, that Joe Gatto announced his exit, but uh, according to this, he's going to be back. He's going to be back. So, good. fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. I haven't seen it. Mostly because True TV's done kind of a good job of locking shit down. It's really hard to find free stuff from true tv unless it ends up being like march madness where you have to buy a subscription to this or that it's fucking hard to do like i just i just want some free episodes i'm kind of cheap sometimes but uh, i don't have i don't have the tv subscription like all these people do me neither you know i got judged for not having youtube premium i'm over here still <laughs> enjoying free youtube 
I'm like, hey, I, I pay for Spotify. You know, I'm, I'm making my way up there. Mm-hmm. I'm the same way. I, I, I let the ads roll. Yeah. I do. You, you pay for the YouTube, Brandon? No, <clears throat> I might as well be wearing a uh, a patch on my eye and a parakeet on my shoulder and just being arg. Yeah. I'm a little bit of a pirate myself. That's what's <laughs> up. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's rewarding. It's kind of like, you know, if you're grilling and, you know, you want to use the charcoal, start a fire. There's just something about cooking on, on an open flame and stuff. There's just something about finding that reward. It's a little more satisfying when you have to spend time trying to find what you really want to watch for free. It's out there on the Internet. We're not putting it out there. We're just enjoying viewing it on there. We're not going to get there's something rewarding about taking all that time and finding it. Is it frustrating as fuck sometimes? Yes. Yeah. And all them, those guys that are super creative and they're just throwing out stuff that you think you're going to watch this and it turns out that's not it at all and you didn't know that that could go into a female or male's body like that. That's just some fucked up pricks, uh, tricks that you guys are doing, you pricks. So what a time to be alive. Yeah. Some weird shit out there. You know what else is weird? I don't know if you guys... Did you guys see this? And uh, it, it's somewhat new that a shark was found on the riverbank in Idaho? How far from a, an ocean? I mean, I just randomly saw this. I, I thought it was clickbait, but then I clicked a couple other sites, and apparently this is a real thing. The rate, It was August 24th when apparently this broke. Uh, this is on Fox News, so it's got to be everywhere else as well, that a shark was discovered on a riverbank in Idaho, alarming residents because it's a landlocked state. So apparently it was a salmon shark. I don't know much about the mm. salmon sharks. Uh, I don't so know if you guys. Ooh, that would be a good name for it, wouldn't it? The old salmon shark. It's a it's a species of a mackerel shark that's usually found in northern Pacific oceans. Apex predators. They feed on salmon. Uh, I guess that gets a name. Squid, sablefish, and herrings. Uh, it's known for its ability to maintain stomach temperature, which I guess is unusual among fish. Not really sure what that means. They grow about 10 foot. Pretty big, what? Pretty big fish. And I'm not really good with geography, so I think I'm going to pull up a map of the U.S. Because yeah, it's right next to Washington and Montana, right? Yeah. A little bit of Oregon. That's so it's here. pretty. Idaho, yeah. Um, yeah, not anywhere. Yeah, Was- it goes Washington, Oregon, and then Idaho. And then to the right of it, like top right of Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, and Utah also touches it, and Nevada. There's no oceans anywhere like, near uh, it. I like how you say the state underneath Washington. Brandon, how do you, how do you say that state? I don't want to say it again because I... Uh, oh, I here we it? go. See, you my grandmother Oregon. puts the R in it. But it's, it's it? Washington, you know. Well, so <clears throat> the one underneath no. Washington. Like the trail. Oh, oh, oh or, it's not Oregon. It's Oregon. Okay. All right. I say gone. Oregon. Yeah. That you you sound very foreign, you know. You take take That's your ass Canadian. back where you came from. <laughs> Is it Nevada? I say I say Nevada. It's Nevada. Nevada. Okay. Yep. Oregon. Which is weird though, because in Missouri there is a city that has a name that's spelled just like Nevada, but they call it Nevada. And, and, and there's the same in Iowa too, in Nevada, yeah. Iowa. Is it uh is it Colorado or Colorado? I say Colorado. 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 Yeah. Do you guys say Oregon? Yeah, Oregon. Yeah. Oregon. Hmm. Not the Oregon Trail. You guys play Oregon Trail? You make yeah, it sound like you're Oregon Trail. So so I mean, so you guys do do you say Michigan yeah, or Michigan. Michigan? Michigan. Michigan. Okay. Well that's an A N. This is an O N. Yeah, or when you see an English language, it's it's so funky. You sound like you're trying to name a dragon, okay, Khaleesi? I don't know what you're doing. Oregon, you know what I mean? I, it's Oregon. Fuck. I always, whenever I'm think uh, how to say something, I naturally type how to say it in Google. And there's that account that just fucking can apparently has taken the time to pronounce every fucking word in the English, and they, they Oregon, Oregon. A W R U H G N apparently yep. is how you would. Yep. Oregon. 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 Okay, I'm gonna try to change it. No, I don't. Don't change it for us. That's what makes you unique, Matt. Just let us give you shit. I can't pronounce shit. I'm the worst. Any of those different shows, 
I try to pronounce names and stuff. It's I got funny. I got one for you guys here, and I, I have a story behind this one if I can, real quick. I know we're yeah, go ahead. At the end of, end of time, there's a county in Nebraska. I was a statewide host, and I pronounced this county, and somebody called in, and they were like, "You pronounced it wrong. How would you pronounce that?" In the private chat. Oh man. Oh. I was like, wait, I, I might have on full screen. I, I would like, say, I'm, I'm going to go first. I'm not going to even think about it. I would, just looking at it, I would say Kea Paya County. Okay. Kia Paha County. Okay. So I, I said uh, Kia Paha and um, it, it K E Y A space P A H A. And I pronounced it how it looked Kia, Kia Paha. So um, somebody said I had it wrong. So I called the county. I called uh, a restaurant, uh, the county district attorney or the county attorney. I called, goodness, the sheriff. So I called three or four different people. And they were they all told me three different things until I got to the last lady who was a cook at one of the restaurants or, or the restaurant. And she said, it's a very small county in Nebraska. And uh, she said, honey, everybody says it wrong. Nobody knows how to say it. I've heard Kia Paha. Uh, some folks say it's Native American. I don't know exactly which tribe up there, um, but it's Kippaha. Or Kippaha is the white version of that. So it's somewhere in between Kippaha and Kihapaha. Kippaha is the way some people say it. So I actually did that, told the story live on the air, and basically said, so we're all saying it wrong. So it's just a, it's a, are you saying it right for the place? Nevada, Missouri, Nevada, Iowa, a great example of that. You know, it, it's it's a fun word to say. You your last name, you know, like some people say it this way, some people say it that way, spelled the same. Who mm -hmm. knows? It is fun to say Kia Paha. What are what's their mascots? I think that's actually Kia Paha County. I think is. I'm gonna let let us guess Kia okay. Paha. If it was like if we were naming, we just start a school Kia Paha. I'm gonna go like. Well, I don't really know much about it, so I'm not gonna say like. Maybe that's a bad one, but just flowing in words. Kangaroos wouldn't sound good, right? I know there's probably no kangaroos anywhere near there around here, but the Kia Paha kangaroos, that's it. The night. I just looked it, I just oh. looked it up. Uh, the population for the entire county as of 2022, 787. Okay. Like and, and it is Dakota for uh, Dakota language for Turtle Hill. The Kia Paha turtles that doesn't sound good. Nobody wants to be the, have their horses. mascot the fighting turtles. Horses, would you say you said knights? Knights would be good. Kia Paha knights. That's gen I mean, anything goes with knights. I mean, my my uh, my my school was the golden knights. Yeah, that's uh, mm. so, ah, man, the, the area around where I'm at too. There's a lot of schools too. I was wondering with the uh, the tribe name too, and I was like, oh, it's probably if it's around the Nebraska area, it's probably something super racist. <laughs> I was like, because in my area too, they had a, uh, a a town called Savannah, like Savannah, Georgia, and their mascot um, was an Indian chief, and their name was Savages, and that is still still their there. mascot. Yes, there's a town in Nebraska um, spelled just like the Virginia town, a much larger called Norfolk, Virginia. Norfolk. Oh, I know it's that. Yeah, but this one is pronounced Norfolk, it's even not. though there's an L in it. There's no R. Nor Folk is how it's spelled. It's pronounced Nor Fork. The reason being is because it's short for the North Fork of a river, but they spelled it N O R F O L K for some god awful reason. But it's Nor Fork. There was an old company that was in the town that I'm at that when their bigger company was in, and they always called it Norfolk, is the way that people would always call it around here too. They'd call it Norfolk. And yeah. I was like, well, I was like, what is that? And they're like, Norfolk. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I've never heard it called that way, but. That's that's weird. Small. I think it's that's about two and a half hours away from me as well. Not to nerd out, Papillion, Nebraska, suburb of Omaha. I heard yeah. somebody come to town and they're like, "Is that Papillon? <laughs> P i p i o l l i o n or something like that?" And Papillon, they thought the L's double L's was a Y sound yeah. <laughs> because of the uh, Spanish. No, it's Papillion. The uh, the one that we always get to from our travelers is um, there is a hotel chain based in a town in Missouri, uh, Cape Girardeau. Uh, a lot yep, of yep. people struggle with Cape Girardeau a lot. That's a tough one. The way it's spelled, it's tough. It is. Um, uh, Beatrice is a town in Nebraska spelled like Beatrice, mm -hmm. but it's Beatrice. 
or beat rice is how it's basically spelled B E A T R I C E, <laughs> but it's it's a Beatrice, not Beatrice. See, it's so crazy because I'm used to dealing with these guys on the East Coast. So now whenever you start naming these places, I'm like, I see these on Interstate 29 traveling up north to, you know, Omaha or Council Bluffs area. So it's yeah. weird you see, you know, when you name places, I'm like, I know where the fuck you're talking about. <clears throat> last one, last one. There's a town that's spelled that way. And I'm just sending it so you guys can see it. The first uh, towns that are spelled differently but and pronounced differently, J-U-N-I-T-A. I think that's how it's. It's Junietta. Junietta. Okay. The second one is Juanita. W U A N E T A. And any times people see the first one, they want to say uh, Juanita because it's spelled like Juan, J U A N. <laughs> so Junietta and Juanita. <laughs> if you say them wrong, people know you're an outsider. No, I just put in the private chat. Those are two that are in New oh, York yeah. that are uh, really, they're two different ones, obviously. One, the first one. How would you guys say that? Scanniatlis, Scanniatlis, A lot of people here say, oh, "What is it? Skinny, skinny Atlas." I spelled the last. I spelled the last one wrong. I think. Uh, so let me let me put this. So, here. is the last one like the town Oswego? Kind of. It, it it's not an a. It's an e at the end. I spelled it wrong. I put a instead of e. So, uh, Swigachia. Or a Swigachi. Oh, uh, exactly. So. Oswe- Oswegachi? That's what I'd say, Oswegachi. People here say Oswegachi. The Oswegachi Oswe- River. I, I love um, that. That's awesome. Yeah. I actually live, the town I live in, uh, the street I live between is between one street and the other street is Oswego Avenue. Whole just the same. Leaf fuck. Awesome. This is a real name of a town. And I don't know this one, but I just saw this. How would you like to be a kid growing up living in oh. that town? That Mom is there. Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> Piggly Wiggly. It's in Wales. I was going to say uh, that's Welsh, man. That's definitely Welsh. Lots of P's, cool. W's, and L's. G's. Lanfair. Wow. Wingle. I have no idea. Um, so this is the town that I grew up in, too. Let's see if you guys can pronounce. Uh, it's a fairly easy one, but a lot of people get this one wrong, too. But. Oh, I. Balco, Balco, Balcoa, Balco, 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 Balco is yeah. That's yeah. It's Balco. Yeah. Wow. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop right there. I got one right. Holy fuck. That's a fun thing. There is a lot of. This is like a thing from Reader's Digest to RD.com. All of these 50, uh, USA Today. Fifty American towns you'll struggle to pronounce if you guys get bored. Maybe we'll bring it up on a different one. There are some tough ones. And it's funny geographically. Like, and it all started, I guess, obviously. I can't say Oregon properly. I say Oregon. Um, there's a, there's so many. And, and I think it's funny, too, because locally, there's a couple of roads that people go to. Like E-E-L-W-E-I-R. How would you say that? E- E-E-L-W-E-I-R. Elwir? Elwir, yeah. Yeah, so that's what I was like. It's the e- the Eelweir Road. Every yeah. single person around here says it's the Eelweir Road. Um, what's the one in Utah that was like X X Y Y Z Z or something like that? And it was called um, Oh my God, I can't remember it now. There was one that was spelled with just like the last three letters of the alphabet, and they called it like Essex. It was it was weird the way they 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 pronounced, it. and I'm like, that's not what that is. And if I can think of it, I'll have to put it in the comment section for sure. Yeah, well, that's. I want to say Utah. Utah. Utah is an interesting place. Interesting place. Okay, so it's a road. Oh, it's Z Z Y Z X road, and it is in PlayStation. And it's a on your way to driving to Las Vegas. It's somewhere in from Utah to Arizona. Physics. Physics. Something like that. It was weird because someone they they're like, oh, it's it's this road, and I'm like. What? It's actually, it's actually a song too by Stone Sour. ZZY ZX Road, song by Stone Sour. We're gonna have to listen to it. Maybe eventually we'll hit him up and it'll be the new intro song for us. I love me some <laughs> Corey Taylor. Ooh-wee. All right. Well, I know we all have busy days, and I looked at the clock and we are way over. So, with that being said, 
I uh, can't think if anybody's still listening to us try to pronounce really hard words. Appreciate it. And uh, obviously, I appreciate you guys as well. And looking forward to not only this show a little bit more, but this fantasy football league we have coming up. So we can continue to talk shit and have something to talk about. And like I said, can't thank you guys enough. Hopefully, you guys have a good rest of your day. Thanks for listening to us. I don't even really know what we talked about, but I know there's going to be some fun images in the background. So thank you, guys. That's all I got. You guys got anything else? No, I'm good. I'm going to go right, take a nap. All right, go take a nap. Hugs and kisses to all your pink parts. We're out of here.